Hey, it's me, Big P. I wanted to go over some of the adjustments that I've made to the Shield Crush uh, is a Gladiator as I start day three. Um, day two was kind of just, uh, you know, grinding out the Atlas. I'm going to mouse over all my gear um, slowly. So if you want to pause the video and take a look, I will also have a POB up. But um, the Shield Crush numbers or the, the gem itself isn't in. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly what my actual DPS is. Um, I made a couple of um, improvements, like here and there. Most noticeably is the six link, obviously. Um, that's going to bring the damage up a lot, but it also brings the mana costs up a decent bit as well. I knew that would be sort of an issue, but I've actually been okay with it. Um, as we move on into yellow maps, uh, I'm going to run one of the higher tier maps, which is only six. And it's alked and everything always ignites, but I'm going to do that while I kind of go over... Um, what I've moved around in terms of, well, just kind of everything and then also kind of nothing. So, um, as you can see, I'm using Enduring Cry now instead of the Battle Mage's Cry with Exsanguinate. I'm kind of just testing that uh, today. I feel like as we move into higher maps and stuff gets more dangerous, please no, sir. Um, it's going to be like just a little bit trickier to make work, particularly now because we have Multi-Strike in the main links. So... If you don't know, um, you can't exert attacks that have been, uh, that have multi-strike on them. So, well, I initially thought that when I put multi-strikes in the main links, um, which does help a lot, uh, in terms of smoothness, um, you just pretty much could not, uh, use the exsanguinate on your main attacks. And so, pretty much half of the time, it would be wasted on uh, a leap slam that I was using for movement, which didn't really feel good. So um, maybe eventually uh, for like a single target setup, um, it would be a little better because, but like, I don't know, Enduring Cry is really good. It's hard It's hard to mess with Enduring Cry or match it really, you know, it's uh, just one of those really strong skills. I actually just moved into this Corrupted Fever, Corrupting Fever uh, 4 link here. Which, it certainly doesn't build it up as quickly as something like uh, a Cyclone Bleed Gladiator would. But, um, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's seemed pretty okay. It's, it's very low level right now, and to be honest, this Shield Crush itself um, is really doing the brunt of the work. I mean, as it should be, it is our main 6 link, and is, we've been gearing for it uh, appropriately, at least in terms of flat damage on the shield. It's felt pretty good. Uh, maybe I should have done a conquer, but, um, there are, I did stream for, like, six hours yesterday. So you can go check out the, uh, the VOD, um, if you want to see, like, the full growth of the character to where it is now. Did my Uber Lab, I think, off stream, but, yeah, um, we're getting to max block chance right now. We're only at 62. Conditionally goes up to 70. Let's do this one quick. <laughs> Hopefully we don't die, because all of the monsters igniting on this seems seems kind of scary. Monsters hit remove. Wow, that's a scary one. I don't think I've seen that one yet. Um, I don't want them to remove my mana. <laughs> that sounds horrifying. So corrupting fever, um, because we're using life tap on our leap slam, refreshes in about I think three uh, of the um, what you call it, three leap slams, which you should be probably doing unless you're like geriatric um with the clear speed and stuff but uh i haven't really had to worry about it, especially because i linked it with increased duration not only because it affects the length of the buff but um also i mean it affects the debuff and the length of the buff which allows you to um, inflict corrupting uh, fever and uh, leave a like if you think that um, GGG should just pop open all the chests when you're done with the league mechanic because it would literally save the player hundreds of clicks every hour My spirit is and I'm already clicking a bunch in this game I'm sure you are too so yeah, as you can see um, even without the exsanguinate um, the bleed pops especially in the uh, league mechanic really do help um, hopefully the single target damage holds up. I think it does. Now that I have, uh, you know, a reasonable amount of both attack and spell block, um, 
I'm feeling way tanky. Decent life pool that can still be improved. We can fill out the life wheel, so we'll probably get comfortably above 5k. Um, still a lot of improvement to be made on gear. Particularly the main hand weapon. Um, because the crafting um, that can go into your main hand weapon is very weird. Since it doesn't really, it doesn't technically matter for the flat damage that you're getting. Since your uh, shield crush doesn't do damage based on that. But let's see, let's make sure you have the corrupting fever on. And there's your boss. Oh, we'll do the invitation as well, just so that we can see. Uh, I can go over more of that and just a little bit more gameplay just to see where uh, it's at at this point. Oh, and can we do a Conqueror too? I don't want this video to be super long. Maybe we can rush to the Conqueror. Let's go for it. So I'll pop that. So with multi-strike, you want to get the one, two, three off, probably. Oh, hell. This guy was a... Uh... Yeah, see? So one, two, three, and that guy was dead. This one's a little bit of a weird boss because uh, it, like, goes between... Oh no, did we just kill him there? Alright, I guess we're okay. The uh, Corrupting Fever does have an instant um, cast time, so if you notice in your skill bar, like if you're just straight DPSing like I am here, um, that it goes down, you can pop it again. I have it on Control E because I already have like a lot. I might end up taking Dash out, if not just because it's something else that isn't a Leap Slam, which would be keeping the Corrupting Fever up. Oh, I can't even do that because Rox is in the Citadel. So, yeah, let's go over the links. Again, like I said, Multi-Strike, um, it's pretty good. It makes it feel a lot um, faster. But, yeah, if you want to use that Battle Mage Exsanguinate um, sort of proc, I don't blame you if you want to do that. I'm just kind of testing with this. Probably will for a couple days. We'll see in the final build guide. Um, but even then, I think like it's going to be like a choice you have to make yourself. Um... Melee Fizz is still strong. We took out Chance to Bleed. Um, I would make sure, like, if you're not sure, that you're at least at 100 um, Chance to Bleed on your main hits. Um, between the 50% here in the Gladiator and 20% here, uh, I'm not sure where else we're getting it. Here, Here's 10. Um, I'm not good at math. Uh, I forget where else we're getting it, to be honest. Um... I think we are getting endurance charges elsewhere on the build besides the enduring cry that I kind of just threw in there. Um, but yeah, the links fortify is just for tankiness and damage. You know, it's like one of those double duty ones. Um, pulverize helps. I guess I should mention that I have the. Uh, I did. Th these are really cheap, um, but I think it's actually a really good one. The more area of effect on the central wave because it'll help you shotgun and reach more. You have now, uh, you know, it's, it almost looks like an actual projectile skill, you know, even though we're a melee skill. Um, between that and the bleed pops, the exsanguinate d didn't really seem necessary. I kind of want to focus on more damage now that uh, I'm moving into, like, doing maven uh, invitations and, like, setting up my atlas and stuff like that. Ancestral War Chief is linked with Maim and Bloodlust um, because stuff's going to be bleeding, so you want to do more damage against it. And then the Maim from here increases physical damage taken. Corrupting Fever is linked with Swift Affliction, Brutality, and Increased Duration. Um, malevolence, Dash. I think we're going to get rid of Dash eventually. Um, I just kind of like the option. Um, but I mean, Leap Slam is really kind of the move skill you want to be using uh, at most times. Um, Blood Rage is Blood Rage. You should pretty much always have this in attack build unless you uh, can't sustain the degen. But we have a decent amount of armor, especially when we pop the Basalt Flask. I think Basalt Flask is pretty good now. Um, on any build that has armor because it gives a more armor so it's a multiplier to your base armor it doesn't give a just physical damage reduction to anybody who's just wearing a cotton t-shirt or whatever you know shit like that uh as for other as for flask i mean i've just kind of been moving around um adrenaline uh, suffix isn't really necessary now so i mean i kind of am just messing around with the the new orbs and seeing what the meta is uh might actually drop this, I mean, this is, <laughs> it's okay. So I do have this sort of like macro of like, hey, you use this when you become chilled automatically so you don't really have to worry about it. But like, it's also my Onslaught Flask. So I kind of want to get Onslaught elsewhere. Um, Staunching, that, that's been fine. Um, the bleed removal is still there. Um, 
you just have to use it while you're bleeding. I don't know why people are so upset about this. It's kind of how it's always worked. Some of the other ones are probably a little bit more difficult, but staunching flask has been fine for me, even though gladiators are probably, you know, well, the, the bleed is a physical dot, so you usually have some armor, so it's not that bad, but uh, the uh, amethyst flask is really for, like, more chaos damage and, like, poison and stuff like that. I should really get curing on this, maybe, but I don't know. Flasks are, like, going to be, like, kind of not really straightforward i think for a lot of builds um although i will look for a lion's roar maybe because i believe like you know that's still going to be a very strong flask for any melee physical damage build probably uh boost our damage in a decent bit and yeah we did the uber lab so now we have the spell block and um i'm not really sure uh, not a lot of people are going for sanctuary here but even so uh with it we're only at 62 so for the last part i think i would either have to get it on a cluster jewel <clears throat> on a small cluster or you might end up going all the way for command of steel um once we can drop this and get life uh, mana leech somewhere else on a jewel um so yeah still a lot of ways to go in terms of uh bringing it to the top you know we probably have another five like free levels and then the last few will be a little bit more of a slog um and probably just fill out the life wheel because uh you know stuff's getting a little bit more dangerous and um we don't have the the reach of the exsanguinate with chain anymore now um i'm gonna play like this today i'm probably not gonna be streaming today because i have a lot of streamers that i kind of want to watch and path of exile is my favorite game to watch that uh, to play and then watch something else on the second screen um, so yeah, uh, I think I'm on the PoE Ninja Ladder, but again, like I said, uh, the DPS numbers aren't showing. I've been kind of using uh, other people's uh, builds for inspiration just to kind of see what they've been doing. That's kind of what brought me to Multi-Strike, um, which I do like. Um, but I guess if you really want to keep the Exsanguinate um, Battle Mages Cry, uh, you could probably go for a Swift Affliction instead. I just had a hell of a time trying to color this with 5 red, 1 green, and I ended up giving up when I got 6 red. I was like, you know what? We're melee skill, we can use... I can find a red gem to fit in. And indeed, I found enough. You can also maybe try Cruelty. But again, uh, you know, this is the kind of thing that I'm not sure works good. I would probably maybe put Cruelty instead of Multi-Strike if you want to use that Exsanguinate um, in the Battle Mage's Cry. Again, you know, you do, do your own testing if you like, if you're doing the build. Because not every build is going to be exactly the same in terms of gear. And in what works for me... Uh, might not work as well for you so you got to kind of adjust especially this league you know so much stuff is different like i'm not going to tell you like these are the flasks you have to have and if you don't have this flask your bill is going to fail because that's just not how the game works i don't think that's how the game has ever worked but this league more than ever with all the changes um so yeah uh still having a lot of fun gonna push it probably stream this more during the week and i uh, might have a more definitive build guide sometime then it's taking me a little longer i mean i think everybody's kind of a little bit slower on progress even up to like the top racers and streamers um because they have nerfed move skills a lot but we've again kind of <laughs> avoided that with the whole leap slam thing uh, maybe leap slam is the new meta uh in terms of move skill uh i think it's about time because it looks hilarious um so yeah let me know what you think let me know if you have any uh, suggestions or questions and stuff like that let me know how your league starts been going let me know what you think about expedition i think i'll have a more i mean i haven't really done the league mechanics so much in terms of actually interacting i'm the sort of guy to just stack all of the currency i did do one of the uh log books those are really cool um and it seems like that might be like the the real like meteor part of um the league but um you probably don't want to jump into one of those until you have uh, a more set up character but uh, i'm getting there so we'll see what we can do so thanks for watching leave a like and uh the twitch and and i'll see you in the next one